Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have the best Notion template, in my opinion, ever to get your life back on track and follow through the goals that you set at the beginning of the year. This whole video today is very much about how to give it your absolute all for the rest of the year. And before I get into the Notion template, which I'm going to share with you all, I first wanna give a little bit of a background story for why I made this video today and kind of tie it in with the Notion template and why I made it the way I did. But if you guys wanna hop right to the Notion template, which I know some of you might want to, I will put the timestamp here anyways, but I do think, you know, listening to the story may help you out. So perhaps stick around for that. It's short. So, but basically a few weekends back, I went to this really fun art gallery event. Thought it was gonna be super low key, but ended up having a few drinks with my friends. And yeah, the next day I felt awful <laughs> being hungover like that. You know, you don't get much done for the rest of the weekend. And I just kept asking myself, like, is this where I want to be right now? And I know I was being extra hard on myself, but it really helped shape me awake and, and like evaluate that day. I sat and thought about like the goals that I hadn't yet reached this year, things I fell off track with, things I was being lazy with. And even my like career goals, I was rethinking like what I was doing and where I was putting my energy. And actually that day I decided I was going to, for those of you who don't know, I run a freelance business in graphic design and web design, but I still worked part-time for a job that was unrelated. That day I decided to quit my part-time job. I was like, it doesn't align with the work I wanna do. I loved the company, but I wanted all the skills I was building to help me with my own freelance business so that I can get that, you know, off the ground. <laughs> so I just, I was like, that day I'm going to quit. I actually wrote in my old Notion template, I wrote in caps, I said, I will quit my part-time job and find work that aligns with building the skills I need to help my business succeed. So the very next day, I resigned. My parents and my friends were like, oh, okay, like a little weird that like, you don't have anything else lined up. My freelance work doesn't pay all the bills, but I just had a feeling things were gonna work out. And actually since then, uh, another place that I have worked at previously that really actually helped build some of the skills that I use today for my own business, reached out and said, hey, would you like to do some work with us again? And so now I'm working with them until November. It's full time, so it does mean that my schedule is like crazy now. Hence this template will really help. I don't wanna ramble too much about my life, but I did wanna give kind of a background story of like why I decided to make this template today and why I think it'll be really helpful. So I switched locations. I just wanted to get a little bit more comfortable while chatting with you guys, because as much as this is a Notion template video, I also just have a lot of things to say on the different sections of the Notion template and why I set it up the way I did. And I'm actually gonna put chapters here right now for this video on what I'll be covering today. But with that, let's get into this Notion template. It's a goodie, I'm really excited to share it. So starting with chapter one, and that is to get back into time blocking and building really solid routines. So there's a reason why in like every self-development, entrepreneurial, self-help book, that they talk about building a routine and the importance of routines because they build discipline. And by having routines, you are showing yourself that you're gonna follow through with the things that you plan to do. Let's say in the morning routine specifically, you're already making sure that you follow through to those promises you made to, to yourself before the workday even started. You're building confidence in knowing that you show up for yourself. If you want to be that person that wakes up at 5.30 a.m. and you do, you're gonna feel amazing. I actually started doing that last week because that was a challenge I set for myself and it felt incredible and I get why people do it because it's not just about how much you can get done before the workday started it's just like feeling good knowing that I made it happen I followed through and I made a commitment to myself and I care about myself because I actually did what I said I was going to do so my tip is to create a routine so this is kind of the one section of notion I set up is my routine building section and planning that out I built a routine for my mornings on work days I'm a little bit more lax about night routines I built it from Monday to Friday and then I also built routines out for Saturday and Sunday. Those are a little bit more flexible, but I just wanted to make sure I knew what I wanted to be doing with my time, Monday to Friday specifically. That's like the big one for me and that I was actually gonna follow through with that. And this Notion template's a really good way to check in and make sure that you are following through with that. My one tip is to not make the wake up time too different though from Monday to Friday versus the weekend because it's really hard to get back into waking up early if you even have like the two days on the weekend where you sleep in heavily. Like you really wanna make it more of like a habit. So so for example, I wake up now, now I'm this person, it's only since last week and we'll see how long I last, but I've made this promise to myself. I wake up at 5.30 a.m. Monday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I like to wake up around 7.38 because it's not too crazy of a jump. I'm not waking up at 10 and then trying to wake up at 5.30 a.m. on a Monday. So that's my little tip as well. So why was my goal to wake up at 5.30 a.m.? I was actually really inspired by the 5 a.m. club, which is a book I've talked about before on my channel. I really liked what the author of the 5 a.m. club 
Robin Sharma said, and I'm reading off my laptop here, but he believes that when we rise at 5 a.m. when the world is quiet and devoid of energy sapping distractions, that this is when we learn to master ourselves. And I really felt this to be true when I was waking up at this time last week. There were times where I would take my dog for like a 45 minute walk in the morning it'd be before seven and no one else was out there and it just really felt like there were no distractions. It was just myself and my own thoughts. And what I really liked from this book was that to perform like the top 5%, we need to stop acting like the 95%. And that's really what I'm trying to tell myself for the rest of this year. So the book kind of talks about like, what would the average person's day look like? Maybe you used to be that person, me, uh, that would roll over and just snooze the alarm a hundred times. And then when you do get up, you feel really groggy. Maybe that's 95%. I think that's quite a common thing to do. Think about what would the 5% do? like they're not gonna be the ones snoozing the alarm and getting up all groggy. They'll just get up right away, follow through with that promise for themselves, and they set their day off on a way better foot for the rest of the day. And I really liked also in this 5am club, it talked about the 20-20-20 rule. And this is the rule where you spend 20 minutes of your morning doing a workout because you know, sweating, getting rid of cortisol and like reducing stress is a really good way to start your day. The other 20 minutes is to dedicate time to reflect. So whether this is journaling, meditating, you name it. And then the last 20 minutes is to spend time learning something new and learning new skills. So I don't quite follow the 20-20-20 method. I don't spend 20 minutes on each thing. Um, by waking up at 5.30 a.m., my 9 a.m. work start. I have more than 20 minutes to spend on those type of things. So mine's different. It looks different than that, but I do like that kind of rule to get those things done before the workday starts. So that's why I set up that part of my notion to be really routine based and focused on that. And so far it's been amazing. I mean, it's only been like a, more than a week now and I will keep you guys updated on how that goes, but I can't recommend it enough and I'm really excited to see what kind of results come out of this new routine that makes me feel like a new person. Okay, so chapter two, reviewing my yearly goals and the second quarter of the year. Q2, I don't know about you guys, but I haven't really looked that much at my new year's goals. I think the best thing I actually did was make a, a physical vision board that I printed out and put in a frame and put in my office so I can see it all the time. But actually going back through my goals that I've listed in Notion often is not something I've done. And now I'm making it a habit to do that a lot more often. I wanted this video to feel a bit like a mid-year review. So on that note, how is everyone doing with their new year's resolutions? <laughs> I haven't been doing so great, hence this video and why I've been focused now on getting myself back on track. Uh, one of my main ones was to read 50 books this year. How many have I read this year? I think we're on book number eight now. I finished seven. It, we're not close to what we should be. I was doing really well at the beginning of the year and I did fall off. I'm gonna pick myself back up though, get myself back on track. I don't know if we'll reach 50 <laughs> at the end of the year, but I think what really matters is just giving it my all for the rest of the remaining months. So let's check in with those goals that you've set. And now that you've reviewed them, you should be checking them daily, every single day. And I know that sounds like a lot, but if you have it on somewhere like Notion, you can just check it on your phone on the way to work, or you can just pull it up on your laptop before you start work. And I've been doing this every day now because it's really important for me to remember my why and what I'm working towards. If it helps, you can even set a reminder to look at your goals for the year every morning or like just create a note on your main Notion dashboard so you know to check it off when you've checked it every day. And the reason to do this is because checking it every day gives you new motivation it enhances your commitment and ultimately it keeps you away from distractions if you're really clear on what you want you're not going to get sidetracked by some other goals that you weren't focused on that year or you didn't plan to focus on that year unless you want to change your mind and redirect your focus but i think most of us know that those are the goals that we would like to accomplish by the end of the year and it's probably not going to change within the year so you know, eliminate those distractions and make sure that you are focused on those goals. Don't leave it another six months to check in on them, okay? So when we, went, when we get to December, when we get to the end of the year, I really hope that, you know, all of us, myself included, have been checking those goals every single day. And that's also why I set up that Notion section to really focus on the goal setting and, and reviewing all of that. Okay, chapter three, the 75 hard challenge. I feel like that's something people have heard about a lot now. I don't know. It shows up more on my YouTube page at the moment, but I also think it's because I have gained more of an interest in it. For those of you who are new to my channel, I have been really blessed to be the video editor for my friend Paige, who is such an inspiration. She's a freelancer as well and is killing it. And she's actually just finished the 75 hard challenge for a second time. So 
you guys can do it. If we can do it once, you know, like Paige has just shown that she can do it twice and still had amazing results the second time and learned even more from it. And it's so inspirational to me, not just the amazing physical changes that she's talked about, but also like the self-discipline and following through on things that you say that you're gonna do and building that confidence in yourself. And because of that, I'm really inspired to try it. So being very real with you guys, I tried the 70 heart challenge last week and I failed. I should let you guys know what the 75 heart challenge is. Some of you might not know. Basically, it is a mental, physical discipline challenge. It's 75 days of one, no alcohol or cheat meals, two, following a diet of your choice, three, two 45 minute workouts, four, one of those workouts must be outside, five, read 10 pages a day of a nonfiction book. Six is to drink a gallon of water every day. And lastly, seven, there's seven rules. The seventh rule is to take a progress photo every day. So I did try this last week and <laughs> I think I have a bit of a YouTube short I can share about it. So that might be on my channel already. I didn't do so great guys. I did really well for the first couple of days, but I had a very sociable week last week and going out in the evenings to like, my friend had a play. My friend and I were starting a podcast. So I'll talk more about that in a little bit. There were just days where like, it just threw me off my routine. This week I'm going to try again. <laughs> and I think it might a little bit be a little bit hard with like all these summer events coming up, but I'm really determined to make it happen and let you guys know how that goes. I think I might be one of those people who it takes maybe four or five attempts to get it right. And I guess the thing I should mention is the 75 hard challenge. If you miss any of those seven rules throughout any day, you have to start over again. The countdown starts again. So for me, I think I got to day four, fell off. And so now I have to start from day one again. But that is why I made this notion template to have a countdown tracker, like a streak. I also created a little section to talk about like why I'm doing the challenge and planning out how I'm gonna do it and really making sure that, you know, I do the grocery shop. I know what workouts I'm gonna do and I plan my week ahead for it because I think this challenge really does have a lot to do with discipline and just, you know, planning out your day to fit those things in and not falling off track with that. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. I think it's going to be a really cool challenge to do and I'm excited to challenge myself. I was excited last week. Yes, I fell off, but brushing myself off and getting back on track. And so if any of you guys want to try it, this template does have that incorporated so that the challenge Will be easier for you to keep track of as well. So chapter four is to fall back in love with learning and progress. As I mentioned, one of my goals this year was to read 50 books and it was really like a book a week and I did not get that done. I only got to like what, I think I said seven books, right? And I fell off track really early this year. I think the 75 hard challenge will actually help me stay on track since you have to read 10 pages every day. But the 75 hard challenge and the 5 a.m. club really show you that maybe you're doing the 20, 20, 20 rule from the 5 a.m. club or the 75 hard where you're doing 10 minutes of reading a day that you can make time for these things. Like I just wasn't making time and prioritizing reading. I wasn't prioritizing learning and that's all on me. So this section, I really wanted to kind of create that excitement for learning again, find books I wanted to read, keep track of them, create notes so that I was being more intentional with the books I was reading. I created a media section for documentaries or podcasts or things that I wanted to listen to and keep track of. I really wanted to make this section just a good fun hub for learning and helping myself get back on track with that, but also helping myself love that again. Because, you know, I loved reading as a kid and I think one of the main reasons of that was one, I think my attention span was better because you didn't have things like short form video content and TikToks that like really, they do mess with your head. I think ever since I like re-downloaded TikTok this year, my attention span is kind of affected by that, I'm not gonna lie. But also I was in love with reading and I really liked the escape and like the form of escape when you get really absorbed into a book. So I'm really focused on the rest of this year, putting a lot of energy and prioritizing learning and reading and falling back in love with that again. So chapter five is health is wealth. <laughs> health is something that I have totally unintentionally neglected over the years. I always thought to myself, well, I don't enjoy the gym, so why would I make myself go? Which is true, you know? But at the same time, I wasn't doing any workouts at home. I wasn't making myself go outside on long walks. And I, I shouldn't use not loving a gym workout to just excuse working out altogether. And then I would always use the time excuse. Like I would say, I don't have time to work out, but as the 5 a.m. club book shows, you do have time. Everyone has the same 24 hours in the day. Yes, some people's jobs might demand more of them, but you choose to prioritize what you wanna get done in the day. And so if that means seeing your friends less, but working out more, 
reading more, getting all these things done, that's okay. Like set boundaries and know what you want to prioritize your time on. Again, to perform like the top 5%, you have to stop acting like the 95%. Now that I wake up at 5.30 a.m., I have time to fit a 45 minute workout in, do some reflection, take my time getting ready for the day, do some reading. And then I take my dog for a walk for 45 minutes and that's more time to reflect and everything as well. Now eating clean, this one's a big one for me too. And I think it has improved over the years since I've left university. During university, I had really bad acne. My face was bloated. I felt just overall bloated. My stomach would hurt from certain foods. And I didn't really consider like what was upsetting my stomach or what was making my acne flare up. Since then I've learned that cutting out like a lot of dairy, my skin has gotten a lot better, my bloating's gone down when I eat less gluten, and I'm just a lot more considerate about what I put into my body and I'm a lot more interested in it now, but I still think there's so much more I could learn and I could be so much more intentional as well. I found also like drinking on the weekends in university would bloat my face a lot. Now, you know, I don't drink as much and with the 75 hard challenge, I won't be drinking at all. So that also really helps to de-bloat your face as well. And I'm just a lot more curious now about the science of what we put in our bodies and how it reacts. And so I've kind of created this little health section to focus on new meals to try out, new recipes, grocery lists, making that easier for you, anything you're curious about learning, any little fun tips and tricks that you've learned about nutrition. This is like a really good notion section to leave that all. Okay, my favorite chapter is chapter six of this video, which is practicing reaching mini goals and manifesting things. This section is really fun. So I know not everyone believes in manifestation. And honestly, I thought the whole thing was a little wishy-washy to start with too. But you know, after reading into it more and applying what I've learned from that to my own beliefs and how I structure my life, I have seen a lot of benefits. I really believe that you do get back what you put into life. So you attract the kind of energy that you're putting into life as well. And I also believe that breaking down your big goals into smaller goals is a really good way to build confidence into reaching those larger goals. One thing I did recently was I created a Pinterest board. It's private, but it's like very physical goals that I'd like to reach. So like maybe a certain trip somewhere, a specific household item I would like for myself or a I don't know. I'm not really big on designer goods, but like say like a designer bag or something. I'm kind of blanking right now. Just like tangible things that I know I could reach. And the reason I did that is so that each time I check off something from this list, I'm building confidence in that I am capable of reaching these goals. Because I think physical goals are the easiest to see that you've completed. Sometimes the life goals, like career milestones and things like that. I did put numbers in there, like how much I'd like to make off my business or um, how many subscribers I'd like to reach on YouTube. And I think those are good tangible things that you can work towards as well. So yeah, I really recommend breaking down your big goals into smaller physical tangible goals that you can put on a Pinterest board or some kind of vision board so that you know what you're working towards and you can like cross those things off and build confidence in yourself. And that's why I actually added this really fun little section in the Notion, which is a wish list of physical items that you would like to buy for yourself and little milestones. So I don't know, maybe you want a new laptop or something. And I like to also attach those physical items with like other types of goals too. So I'd say I get to a certain point with my business, say I have like four new clients. I'm also gonna reward myself with this thing that I wanted on my vision board, which is like maybe a new laptop. That way I'm crossing off two goals. One is reaching that certain amount of clients and then attaching it to this physical item that I'm gonna follow through buying and really just solidify that I've reached that goal. So this is just like a fun little tip, something that works for me that I find helps keep me motivated, um, helps me feel more confident that I'm actually achieving what I want in life. And I thought this would be like a fun place for you guys to put in any items that you wanna to work towards as well. And life isn't just about the physical things, right? So a lot of those other types of goals that you wanna to work towards, like places you wanna visit, things you wanna try, big goals that you just wanna achieve like life-wise, I also made little sections here for you to fill those out as well. Okay, so chapter seven is realizing your why. At the end of the day, knowing your why is what's gonna help you keep going in times that are tough. You should know at the end of the day, what are all your goals for? What is your main purpose? What is your big why? Are you trying to make an impact on the world? Are you trying to be at a point financially where you can provide for your family? Keep digging for this purpose because I think figuring that out is a really good way to solidify everything else we talked about in this notion template, why you wake up every day and do the things that you do. Is your purpose to make a difference in the world in some way? You know, don't dream small, dream big. It may seem overwhelming, but perhaps you pick a cause that you're really passionate about. Maybe your work doesn't directly relate to it. Pick a charity that does, you know? Tell yourself, I'm gonna set a certain amount of percentage aside to give this charity every month, or if I reach this milestone, I'm gonna put this much money into that charity. 
I think these things are really important. Within the section, I also have a spot for it that's called job seekers. And this could be applicable to you if you're a business owner or even if you're working nine to five, like if you've ever had anyone reach out to you for job advice in your field, maybe keep track of their names here. Maybe there'll be a time down the line where you can actually help them get a job. For me, there have been people that have reached out to me asking for some work with web design and video editing. And currently I don't have enough freelance work to give it to them. And if I did, I would love to help other people like break into this field. So what I did is keep track of their names. If you guys ever reach out to me, I just keep track of it. And if I ever do have work come up where I can share that with you, I would definitely reach out and see if I can make that a possibility. So this is never a big part of your why. I think being able to give back to people is really important to help motivate you to keep going as well. And then we won't get into this part, but I also have a little tab to to keep track of my freelance work and who I'm working with as well. Okay, so we're getting towards the end, guys. I know I've been chatting a lot, but chapter eight is to follow the greats. Learning from those who have already achieved the goals that we have set for ourselves can be a really invaluable experience. Inspiring people offer like a wealth of insight, stories, knowledge. You can learn from their mistakes, learn what not to do, learn what tips or tricks help them get to a certain place faster. I just think it's really important to look up to the people you admire and also take information from them and study them. I really like this quote and it said, there's no better way to motivate yourself to do something than by watching others succeed. And that's a really good way to look at things. Like if you see something that you like, someone else doing. Say you're someone who's quite jealous. I definitely would push that energy away. Put that energy into motivating yourself to also try achieve and reach those goals. If you see someone doing something that you like and you want to be like, take that as inspiration to work harder and study them and see what they're doing. I think it's really important when you see someone successful to look at them and think, if they did it, why can't I? How can I do it as well? And I also think it's really important to surround yourself with good role models in your daily life. It doesn't have to be business or career focused, but just like good healthy role models in your family or your friends, people who are doing really cool things in their own lives and just healthy relationships overall. But it is really important to seek out mentors. That's something that I'm currently trying to do. I think there's a lot of people that inspire me in my life, but just finding someone who specifically can help me a lot with my own career journey is something that I'm still looking to do. I also think it's important to set aside time to reflect and figure out who you wanna be, who are some people that you really look up to and why. And so that's also why I created this section and I just wanted it to be like a hub where you can put all those thoughts and know what kind of people you look up to and why to help you determine who you wanna be. So the conclusion of this video is to wake up and act like the person you want to become every single day and to use this notion as a hub to keep track of all the things you're doing to work towards becoming a better version of yourself. I'm gonna say this quote again for I think the third time in this video because I just love it so much, which is to perform like the top 5%, you need to stop acting like the 95%. Wake up every day and act like the person you want to be. Think to yourself, if I was my ideal self right now, what time would they wake up? What would they wear? How would they dress? How would they talk? How would they act? What would they do with their lives? What kind of fitness or health, like what kind of shape would they be in? What kind of relationships would they have in their life? Where would they be with their career? How would people describe them? Work towards becoming that person because there really is nothing stopping you. I saw this TikTok once that I really, really liked and it compared life to building a Sim avatar. For any of you guys who, who played Sims as a kid, I loved playing Sims and building your own avatar, choosing what they're gonna wear, how they're gonna look, how they're gonna sound, but also building their career path, relationships they get into, everything like that. Think of yourself as your own sim and molding yourself into the person you wanna become. I think change is really exciting, we should embrace it. And inviting change for the better into your life is a really important part of your growth journey. So I know this was a chatty video because it was a lot more than just a Notion template. I'm going to put a little tutorial here of where to download the template. I really hope that it can be a source of inspiration to put down your goals and keep track of your progress. I really am excited to show you guys where I'm at in six months when this year is over and what progress I've made and keep you updated on my 75 hard challenge journey and just waking up at 5 30 a.m consistently and letting you guys know how that goes with that keep chasing your dreams keep working towards the person you want to be and I will see you guys all in my next video very very soon thanks guys talk to you all then <laughs> bye